Okay, so let's take this up a notch. Okay, same thing as before. We're doing a synthetic division. Here's a nice little binomial. Solve for it. X plus 2 equals to 0. Bring the minus 2 over. You got X equals to minus 2. That becomes your divisor in synthetic division. So minus 2. Don't forget, nice little bracket that goes all the way through here. But here's one of the things that I want to point out to you. Before you go rocking through this, make sure it still has all of the X components. For example, 5, 4, 2. Do you see what's missing? You're missing a 0x3. You still have to have that 0 placement holder, even for synthetic division. So let's put down these wonderful little coefficients. Okay, so 5 minus 6. Don't forget the 0, the 3, the 2. Oh, that's a minus 2 and the 1. Oh, my, my, my. Could you imagine the mess we would have if we forgot the 0? Ha! Huh. Okay, so 5 goes there. First things first. That's easy because that becomes minus 10. Add that together. That's minus 16. So we're starting to get into some big numbers here. Minus 16 times minus 2, of course, is going to be positive 32. 32 plus 0, oh my goodness, we are getting into big numbers. Okay, multiply that by minus 2, you get minus 64. Add that one in there, you get a minus 61. Okay, minus 61 times minus 2 is going to give you 122. Add that together, that leaves you with 120. And then 120 times minus 2 is going to give you minus 240. Add that together, you have minus 239 remainder. Holy moly. But look at the positions here. There's the 1's position, the x position, the x squared, the x cubed, and the x to the 4th. Which makes sense, because if you think about it, you're just dividing by x, which means each one of these guys is decreased by x, right? Okay, so, whew, now... I want you also to try something else here. I want you to take this, because remember that what this particular lesson was called way, way at the beginning. It was called the remainder theorem. Hmm, I wonder what that means. Okay, let's find out. Do you see this minus 2? Look what I wrote down here. I wrote down a minus 2 here. And I'm going to ask you right now, replace all of the x's, by this minus 2. Oh, okay, all right, let's see what we can do here. We have 5, let's put the minus 2 right into the polynomial, minus 2 to the power of 5, minus 6 times minus 2 to the power of 4, plus 3 times minus 2 to the power of 2, minus 2 to the power, oh, there's no power, times minus 2, and then plus 1. I, I wonder what this is going to look like in my calculator. Okay, well, let's bring up the calculator and do it. Okay, so let's put them in. 5, bracket, just like you saw it back here, just like what you had written here. Throw it in the calculator exactly the same way. Let's go. Minus 5, minus 2, bracket to the power of 5. Okay, close that over. Minus 6, bracket, Minus 2, bracket, to the power of 4. Remember, you don't need a zero placement holder here. Not when you're putting this back in, not when you're substituting back in, because the zero placement holder is just going to be zero anyway, so it's not going to count. So keep on going. Plus 3, bracket, minus 2, bracket, squared, okay? Minus 2, bracket, negative 2, okay? Plus one. Oh my goodness. Boy, that's that's huge. Okay, good thing we wrote that down. Hit enter. Bonk. Wait a second. Minus 239? I've seen that somewhere before. Holy smokes, look at that. That's my remainder. What? 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 This guy, when you substituted this value in, that's the divisor, the thing that you divided by. When you substitute it into the original question, it pops out the remainder for you. 
Oh, wow. So that's so cool. So what it says right here, what do you notice? Well, you'll find out that when you substitute it, when you take the original polynomial, whatever the polynomial is, and I was going to use f of x, but let's call it polynomial of x, p of x, and when you substitute in that thing that you just divided by and you got minus 239, that works out to be the remainder. Oh my goodness, that just, that is just way too cool. And you know what's cool about this, folks, is this is going to help us with factoring like you wouldn't believe. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Okay, so let's go. What does this mean? This brings up this wonderful thing called the remainder theorem. Now, why is it a theorem? Why isn't it a remainder law? Because we can't test every single polynomial in the world. It's impossible. There's infinite number of polynomials. I'm sorry, I don't have infinite amount of time, okay? But what's cool here, it says right here, right here, remainder theorem. When a polynomial is divided by any kind of binomial here, the remainder is whatever this is. Remember, x minus a equals to zero, x equals to a, which tells you take that a, substitute it back into the polynomial here. And when you do, you get the remainder. Oh, my, 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 my. Isn't that fantastic? So when we look at example seven again, and we took this and said, okay, I'm going to put the minus two in here. Because again, don't forget, you have to solve this guy out. X plus two equals to zero, X equals to minus two. There's your divisor. That's what you substitute back in. So that was that five minus two to the power of five minus six minus two to the power of four plus three minus two squared minus two times minus two plus one. That gave us that wonderful remainder that we got way back here on this question, which was minus 239. Okay, minus 239. So that was our remainder when we substituted in this wonderful divisor. Okay, so what's cool about this? Well, since we have a remainder here, you know and I know that this original factor of x plus 2 is not a factor. This original divisor, I should say, is not a factor because it doesn't go in evenly. So knowing that, we can actually use remainder theorem to help us divide and help us factor. That's what I'm going to show you next. But not yet. I want to look at one more question. <laughs> look at this. Example 8. This one just says straight out, find me the remainder. Okay, great. Great. Super. Excellent. Let's go x minus 3. x minus 3 equals to 0. Bring the 3 over. x equals to 3. That's what you substitute back into the original polynomial. So you go whatever the polynomial is times 3. Okay? Substitute in the 3. All right. So this is going to be minus 4, 3 to the 4, plus 2, 3 squared, minus 3, minus 3. Let's see what that gives us. Again, I would probably just boot up the calculator and do it that way. Okay, so let's throw it in there. Ready? Minus 4, bracket, just like you saw it, just like it was written. 3, bracket to the power of 4. Okay, mouse it over, plus 2, bracket, 3, bracket to the power of 2, squared. Okay, boom. Minus bracket, there's the substitution of 3, minus the 3 that was in the equation. Punch it. Let's see what we get. Minus 312. Holy smokes, another huge, huge remainder. Okay, so let's go write it out. Come on, you. There it is. Okay, so the remainder for this guy would be minus 312. Oh, my. So again, that you can say right off the bat, since it does not divide in evenly, this is not a factor. That's what's going to be so cool about this. We're going to use this remainder theorem to help us factor these astronomically huge, huge, huge polynomials. And you're just going to laugh. <laughs>